Hi. Are you absolutely fed up and disgusted and completely confused as to why people keep ghosting you all the time? And maybe you even got like me. I got off all the dating sites because it was so prevalent. I'm like, this is just a complete waste of time. Well, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to tell you why people ghost. Where does that come from? Also, why is it so prevalent? What's keeping it alive? And what can we do about it? Maybe you or someone you care about is a ghoster and then maybe they'd like to change that. Well, I'm going to give you some solutions on how to handle all of that. The first thing to recognize is, you know, what's created this ghosting? Where did it all come from? What's the genesis of it? Well, the genesis of it is really um, the internet, which I'll get to at the end, so hang tight for that. But what underneath, why are people ghosting? Well, a person who ghosts is somebody who emotionally is compromised. Um, they're basically underdeveloped emotionally, and they're exercising a form of emotional abuse. And I know that sounds really harsh, but think of what a ghoster does. You're in communication, you're building relationship, and boom, they sever it. It's a massive, out of nowhere, no explanation, abandonment. That's abusive. And there, you know, there's different types. They're the ones that meander in and out and ghost periodically. Like that's even worse because you never know when the abandonment's coming, but that's abusive. Like, I don't want to sugarcoat this for someone to do that is abusive. All right. Now there is the type that you're early on and getting to know somebody and they just cut it off. That's still abusive. That's it. And that's, you know, either side of that, a person who does that, does that is emotionally underdeveloped. All right. Now, in most cases, I'm not saying that, you know, we should jump out and go, oh, these people are narcissists and they're evil. That's not it. Many, all of us have emotional deficiencies because we were all raised by perfectly imperfect parents. And so we all struggle emotionally. And now I'm not talking about the person who does this vindictively, okay? But I do want to speak truth, and it is abusive to ghost somebody. Now, the problem is what's going on inside of the ghoster, all right? Like I said, most of them, their heart is not to be abusive. But in their childhood, and this is the root cause, they experienced high levels of powerlessness and a lack of healthy, attuned attachment from their caregivers, all right? So they suffered a lot of abandonment. And now all of that powerlessness, all of that pain, all of that lack of attachment is being expressed as denial. And I'll show you how they will de they'll deny that any of this is true, all right? I'll get to that in a minute. But it, it's being expressed as denial, detachment, dissociation, and therefore they're ghosting you in an attempt to seek power and control because they feel so powerless and out of control inside of them. And here's why. Because of the lack of attachment in childhood, because of the powerlessness in childhood, they are filled with pretty high levels of fear they're scared to death in the areas of confrontation, being able to, and confrontation isn't about fighting. It's about discussing and sharing. What are my needs and wants, morals and values? What do I like and dislike? All right. They don't know how to do that. All right. They don't know how to express their needs and wants. They don't know how to be vulnerable. They don't know how to connect and have intimacy. All right. That's because they didn't have it as a child. Now, Here's where we get into the denial, detachment, and um, uh, dissociation. Most people watching this will say, but Kenny, that's not me. That's, I'm, I'm not detached. I'm not in denial. My childhood was great. I'm not, you know, there's, you're wrong about all this. Well, first of all, <laughs> your childhood is, was probably great. I'll agree with that. But your parents are perfectly imperfect. And every parent abandons, it, abandons us. Every parent makes, you know, puts us in powerless situations. These are, it's unavoidable. We are human. All right. Now you just experienced it. It's such a high level. And your defense to survive it was to create a massive wall of denial, detachment, 
and dissociation from it. And so you're not aware of it. And so I don't hold it against you, but you're so detached from reality of what your childhood experience was like, you don't know. Well, and if you want to argue that, that's fine. I'm okay with that. But the proof is in the pudding. I already know what you say. Well, Kenny, it's just not true. I'm just busy with other things. And, and you know, my mind doesn't work that way. And, you know, I'm so self-assured with myself. I just don't need to be tied to my phone. Well, do you hear what all of those are? Those are defense mechanisms. Every single one of them hides the fear of inadequacy, low self-esteem, self-judgment. It's like, no, I can't be wrong, Kenny. Don't tell me this. Those are all walls and defenses and defense, defense mechanisms so that the person doesn't have to face the underlying pain and admit that they have an underdeveloped emotion because in their childhood, they were meant or they were taught to feel bad and deficient for their imperfections. And so they can't do it now. Now, there is a side of ghosters that are aware that what they're doing, they're aware that they're afraid of confrontation. They're aware they have low self-esteem and don't know how to express themselves and they're scared to death. Like they're aware of their, you know, attachment issues and their powerlessness and all of this, okay? So you have two different types exercising the ghosting. Some that are totally conscious of it and aware of it and don't know how to overcome it. And then the other side where they're, you know, falsely empowered, they're so detached from reality, they don't even see it as true, all right? So the thing to recognize is neither side is bad. This is not a bad person. There might, there's a small subset of people that are, you know, that are in so much, I don't want to say they're bad, but they are using it, um, to, they are consciously choosing to be abusive, all right? That's a very, very small subset. Most are being emotionally abusive and completely unaware that it is abusive. And probably from watching this video, they'll be heartbroken and go, oh my God, I want to fix this because the last thing I want to be is emotionally abusive. All right. Now we have to look at something else when we run into this as a person, you know, who hates ghosting, like you're watching this because you can't stand ghosters. All right. Well, we have to realize we are a part of the problem and the solution. And the re how we find that truth is we have to ask ourselves, what's the benefit of a ghoster? Why would we be attracted to? And I know you'll say, but I didn't know they were a ghoster, Kenny. And that's true. You didn't, unless you've done a lot of recovery work. So like myself, I can look at a picture and I can tell who a ghoster is. It's, but that's because I've made this my profession. Now, my students, they can do the same thing, but so on. Look, we don't teach how to have relationships or any of this. So it's like asking somebody to be a pro athlete, but they've never picked up a golf club, thrown a baseball, played football. They, it's, they may have the desire, but they've never practiced. They've never learned the skills and tools. Well, that's everyone in relationship. When you go become an expert in relationships, you can just look at dating profiles and see, oh, this is who this person is. Like it's all over them. It's very easy. It's not complicated. Relationships are only complicated because we're uneducated about relationships. So one of the things like when I kept finding ghosters and what got me off dating sites is I do what I always do. I run into a problem with somebody else and I flip it and I go, they're not the problem. The problem is me. And this is, this is part of the denial and detachment in society. We think the problem is always the other person. That shows our lack of emotional development because the problem is never the other person. It is always within us. We are attracted to this and we have to find out why. Well, once I did the investigation, I came up with some really great reasons for me to be attracted to a ghoster. Can you see what they are? Think about it. What are some of the best benefits? Low to virtually no commitment. Do ghosters flirt? Like, or they turn the charm on and then they disappear. Maybe it's for one hour, maybe it's for one day, maybe it's for one month, but there's no commitment. They always leave. We love that. Like I had to realize, oh my God, these ghosters are wonderful because I never have to commit to them. They disappear. Now I'm telling everyone I want a commitment, but yet all I'm swiping right on are people that won't commit. That's about me. My picker's broken. I had to admit, remember denial. 
I had to face my own denial. Oh my God, I'm saying I want someone committed, but I'm not picking them. I need to look at myself. Oh my God, I'm picking someone who's not capable of commitment. What a, this is wonderful. I can play little games with them, get a little intensity hit and disappear. Do you see the other benefit of that? Low drama. The relationship never gets built enough for there to be any drama. Low intensity, tons and tons of freedom. Because you most with ghosters, you never meet them, right? It's always dangling the carrot and then they disappear and you're chase, chase, chase. So you spend your time in fantasy as you're off playing golf, hanging out with your girlfriends, whatever it is you do. So you get the benefit of living this complete solitary life with no commitment, no restraints, not accountable to anyone, have to tell them what you're doing, where you're going, but you get to fantasize about what it might be like to finally meet them and spend time with them. And oh, there's their little text. And oh, we trade a little bit and we disappear, or they disappear and we get to fantasize again, but we're free. Wow, this person's great. Are you starting to see why we're the benefits of a ghoster? Also, the biggest benefit for a ghoster and one of the biggest benefits of being a ghoster is what I call the light switch. Do you see what a ghoster does? They treat, and this is the emotionally abusive part, they treat everyone like a light switch. When they feel sad, lonely, depressed, whatever it may be, when they want attention, they participate. They flip the light switch. When they don't, they flip it off and then they use their denial techniques of, oh, I just got busy. Oh, I just didn't think about, oh, I, oh, oh, right? And do you see, we get to do the same thing. So people attracted to ghosters are light switches. They love to flip that switch on and off and they love to be in a relationship where there's no commitment and no, no personal accountability. Well, that's what got me off. I sat, you know, it started this video by blaming the ghosters, the truth is, I had to be responsible for myself. I realized it is incredibly rare to find love on a dating site because of this dynamic. And so obviously I'm in the wrong place. That is not where I'm gonna find what I want. So I need to spend my time in places where a committed person can be found. And so that's why I got off the dating sites. I owned my side of the street. That's all we can ever control. Now, if you have two chronic ghosters, two people that do this and bounce in and out, and as I said, the most toxic form is the periodic, all right? This is the person who moves in and out of the ghosting, connection and ghosting, connection and ghosting. Do you see how abusive that is? You never know when the abandonment's coming. That is torment. Now, if you have two people pursuing a relationship like this, what you have is two people who suffered through really chaotic childhoods. Their parents pulled attachment and um, connection and intimacy. It was on a carrot and they chased it and got a bite of it and it was pulled out of their mouth. Like that was their childhood. Now, whether they recognize it or not is a completely different story since most people are completely detached and in complete disillusionment about their childhood and, don't, and denial that their childhood is filled with traumatic moments. All of ours are, it's just fact. And that's part of why I do this is uh, I'm trying to bring reality to all of us because our relationship, career, every problem we have in life goes back to childhood, nothing else. And until we start addressing that, any other solution's a waste of time or any other attempt is a waste of time. So I, I say that in every video, uh, you're probably sick of hearing it, but that's how important it is. And I'll try to say this as lovingly as I can, deal with it, because that's what you have to do with denial. You just have to keep punching at the wall until it drops. And so that's why I keep punching at it. So for those of you who've accepted it, I apologize, but the majority of people that watch this are stuck in denial. And so it's my loving attempt to help them overcome that. All right. Now, if you recognize in this video for the first time, you're like, wow, I am a ghoster. I now see how abusive it is. Um, or I'm picking um, ghosters and I don't want to do that. I need help. What, what do I do? Well, there, I need to touch on there are a couple things working against you. The first is this. Do you see that whether you're the ghoster or the person picking the ghoster, what are you ultimately afraid of? 
connection, intimacy, right? Because there's no potential for relationship. See, relationship requires an in-person dynamic. We have to sit face to face. We have to hear voices. But that's not possible with a ghoster, all right? So one of the biggest things that gets in the way of people is they have to work with a professional like me. Well, that requires intimacy and connection. You're picking a ghoster or you are the ghoster because that's what scares you. So that's the first thing you're going to have to get over or face is your fear of connection and intimacy. You have to hire a professional to ultimately conquer this. You will not conquer this by watching videos on your own, reading books and doing it solo. You can't because you can't see yourselves. You're too close to it. You can't get here from here. It's just not possible. You need a guide. Think of your profession. You didn't get to be an expert in your profession without going to school and working with mentors and teachers that taught you. It's the exact same for this. So you, that's the first thing in your way is the fear of intimacy, the abandonment and the powerlessness you experienced as a child that you're now using to control others and gain power over is a block to your uh, ability to get help because you're gonna find defense mechanisms. Oh, it's too much money. Oh, I can't afford it. Oh, all these different things. That's you denying yourself, and that's a sign of your low self-esteem because you're spending money on everything else to avoid it. You have the money. You have the time. You're just scared to death. And so that's the first thing you're going to have to get over. The second thing is this. This gets back to what causes it. The Internet itself is the problem. Do you see what the Internet does? The only way to communicate in the Internet is through text message. It's through a wall, all right? Do you realize now that if you actually call somebody, you are now seen as a, a derelict, that you are now unstable? Think of it, whether it's business, especially dating. Oh my God, you call a woman, and I'm sure women, you try and call a man. Oh my God, what? They want to call me. Boom, delete, block, ghost. That's a, that person is seriously disturbed. Think of that. That's what the internet has created. It has created a society that is horrifically underdeveloped emotionally and made it worse. The only way to be in relationship is in person. A phone call moves you in the direction of creating relationship. Text, email moves you away from it. Yet the internet survives off the separation. Why do you think all the riots and everything are going crazy? Because people are devolving. All of us are getting worse emotionally as we rely on the internet more. And so what happens is societal rules change. Now society accepts that relationship is done through text message, through a computer screen. That's why the primary relationship that, that most people have is with pornography. That's why it's one of the leading businesses, because people can't do it in person. They don't know how. It would require vulnerability. So ask yourself, how much of that stuff are you watching? That's the proof of it, male or female. How much in, and your porn may not be that, but is it other videos, TV shows? Like how are you detaching from reality and using a screen versus getting on a phone call or sitting across from somebody? That's the internet. That's the cost of it. Now, we get to the solution. The best solution is to work with a professional like myself, one-on-one, -on -one, individually. If you're not ready for that, well, then you need to invest in their programs. A lot of people have online programs. I do. Um, you need to invest in that. Again, it doesn't have to be me, but you need to invest in somebody's program. Now, I want to step further because I know that most people don't want to do that. I created an audible version of my program. So people can start there. They can start in their detachment and their fear and basically ghost me and just listen in audible form. Then they can move from that to, to going through my university, through the videos and workbooks, and then eventually get to one-on-one. -on -one. It's a progression to work them out of what the internet and their childhood has, has created so that they can get reattached to themselves and work this journey.
Now, if that's you, if you're tired of being a ghoster or being ghosted by people and you're ready to do the work, then I suggest you go to my website, www.thegreatnessyou.com. That's www.thegreatnessyou.com. You, the letter U, all right? You're going to look for the complete emotional mastery journey and in Audible. That's the first thing. It's $100. You get the whole library. It's like 20 hours of content to walk you through healing from your childhood trauma, be able to create intimacy and connection, overcome codependence, trauma, everything. All of these dynamics that we all suffer with equally. It'll walk you through that. That's step one, and it's only $100. That gets you moving in the direction of being able to overcome a ghoster or overcome being a ghoster and start creating the healthy love and connection that you deserve. If you know somebody that's struggling with this, please share it with them. Please leave me your comments. And as I always say, no matter where you are in this, just enjoy the journey.